Hi, I'm Bruce Weigo here at the International Swimming Hall of Fame, and I'm standing in front of a new exhibit in honor of Dr. Benjamin Franklin. Today was a very interesting day at the Hall of Fame because we had a very special visitor in Dr. Franklin himself. Well, thank you all so much for having me. I know young Bruce introduced me, but my name is Ben, and um, you may call me um, Ben because I've been called far worse. Ben, I want to, you know, you're here at the Swimming Hall of Fame. You weren't able to make your induction uh, 50 years ago, and, and I understand I that I you're doing. back here for a very special reason to Fort Lauderdale. That is true. Well, I, the most important thing I was here for is to promote swimming to all of you, to make sure that everyone knows how to swim, um, but also I understand we are finally inducting me. Finally inducting you, yeah, you weren't able to make it, but now on the, uh, you're here because the city of Fort Lauderdale, as you guys all know, oh, has yeah. committed $27 million to renovate the Aquatic Center. And uh, by all means, huzzah, a hearty huzzah. And we know how much uh, you enjoyed swimming and maybe you'd like to tell the kids here and, and everybody else about some of your swimming experiences. Would that be all right? Can I tell you a little bit? Does everybody here know how to swim? Oh, this is a great, these are great swimmers from I the thought local so. swim team. Yeah. I thought so. It was really very, um, it was really very unusual when I was a boy. People used to think that um, being um, completely doused in water could be dangerous. Um, people didn't even bathe very often. I bathe once a month whether I need it or not. Um, but I grew up in a family that was filled with sailors. My older brother Josiah, I have, um, I have the tenth son. I have 16 brothers and sisters. And my older brother Josiah went off to sea. And my mother, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> do forgive me. My mother Abaya, she was from an island where everyone would go off to see lots of fishermen. It was an island called Nantucket Island. And I grew up um, sort of in and out of boats and canoes and um, swimming, loving to swim. And I don't mean just loving to swim. It was my absolute favorite thing to do. And I was very fortunate when I was about, oh, I don't know, six or seven years old, uh, my family moved. There were about nine of us in the house, and we moved to a house up on Union Street in Boston, and there was a pond right nearby, and we would be in that pond every day. I was fortunate in that I spent very little time in school. Um, do you all go to school? Yeah. You're very lucky. I went to school when I was nine years old, but really just for about a year. Um, I had very little education, but I spent a lot of time in the water. There were really two things I loved more than anything else, swimming and reading. And when I was, oh, I don't know, maybe eight years old or so, I got my hands on this wonderful little book, and it is called The Art of Swimming. Oh, this book was extraordinary. So, you see, back then, we didn't swim to get somewhere fast. We swam to cool down. We swam to stay safe because, you know, people could drown if they didn't know how to swim. And with um, this wonderful little book, The Art of Swimming, which you can see, um, it would teach us all these wonderful um, exercises to do in the water. Um, different postures one could take, maybe a little different than how you swim, but we wouldn't just do the breaststroke or the kicking. We would, I would, oh, there was one where I would sort of rest on the water and I would put both my feet up and I would sort of dangle there in the water, but with my feet out of the water. What you have to imagine is me not quite so big. And, um, oh, and I just delighted in it. It was absolutely wonderful. Um, but you have to remember, and, but there was more than that, because why does a person float in water? Do you know why? I think you're absolutely right. Buoyancy. That's called buoyancy. There's also the idea of how the water 
has more density than the air around us, the ether, I call it. And when we start to talk about density and buoyancy in relation to swimming, do you know what we're talking about? Science. Science. So, loving to read and loving to swim is one of the things that promoted me to fall in love with the natural world, to fall in love with science. And has anybody here ever been to London? You have? So in London, it was very crowded. And, um, and I used to go and swim in the Thames. In fact, one time with a group of friends, we were outside London in a little town called Chelsea, and I dove into the water and I swam Oh, I don't know, for a mile or two at least. And everyone was so excited. By, I, I made it look fun. I, you've all had that experience where you're splashing around and having a wonderful time. And you can imagine everybody else thinking, well, that really looks fun. So many of my friends and others invited me, asked me, pleaded with me to teach them how to swim. I came this close to becoming a swim instructor. Can you imagine how different my life would have been if I had stayed in England and become a swim teacher instead of, instead of moving back to Philadelphia and becoming a printer? I'm imagining it. Hold on. All right, it's been imagined. So that is just a little bit. But so I guess what I'm trying to tell you is that for me, there were really three things about swimming that um, delighted me. Wonderful exercise, we all know that. Science, the science of water, the science of fluids. Do you know what else is a fluid? Mm, water is a fluid. How about electricity? The electric fluid. I learned that electricity is a form of fluid, unless they've changed that. Well, I don't know what you are all been doing for the last two centuries. So we have this wonderful, delightful experience. It's just fun. We have this idea that it introduces you to new ideas. It's good for you. But it also can save your life. Because if you're like me and have the opportunity to travel back and forth across the ocean on a boat many, many times, I think I crossed the ocean 10 times, being able to swim makes you feel much safer when you're off in a squall, in a storm. So that was really all I came to tell you about this idea that I, 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 just, I just am so happy to see more people learning and enjoying swimming because it was so rare back in my day. What about you, Bruce? Do you love to swim? I love to swim. I, I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't swim. I can't imagine. Yeah, and you, I think, uh, I read one account that you wrote in a diary that was published that uh, one time you were becalmed out in the middle of the ocean. Oh, yes. I did have a chance to um, swim in the middle of the ocean. That is an experience. And I know that people love to describe me as an inventor. And I must tell you now, and I'm so sorry to have to be the one to tell you this, I never really invented anything. I found inventions that other people had, and I improved on them. And one of the inventions that I discovered and then improved on was from this book I told you about, The Art of Swimming. And it was, they were these paddles that you would put on your, you know, on your hands and your feet. And you, and you would move faster, like a duck has bigger feet so they can push the water out of the way, and it would move you faster, um, which seemed like a very good idea. Unfortunately, it didn't work as well as we hoped. Um, instead of making it easier, it actually made it harder. Um, it actually worked better as an exercise tool to create great, but more importantly, I had made the um, paddles out of boards, and the only thing I had to attach the boards to my hands and my feet were leather straps. And I don't know if you realize, but leather straps like that one, they, when they get wet, they, they what's that? They don't stay. Yeah, they stretch out. So the idea of the swim flipper um, was very, it, it seemed like a good idea as soon as somebody comes up with a better material to make it out of. 
I, I think they have. How many of you use swim fins today? Oh, oh, I'm so glad to know. How about hand paddles? Oh, do you use, still use hand paddles? Good. Yes. So, so you have improved on them. So most Good. people would say that these were your first inventions. I suppose that's right, because I did do it when I was a boy, so I guess those are my first inventions. But it's sort of like, um, it's sort of like, oh, I'm Oops. dropping my bike. It's sort of like, um, oh, it's sort of like my spectacles. My, I didn't invent eyeglasses. Um, I just found, as I got older and couldn't see as well, I just found a way to make eyeglasses better by attaching two different lenses onto them. So I, I improved on the eyeglass, but I did not invent it. That was invented a couple of hundred years before I was ever born, I think. But you're credited with inventing the bifocal, which the is The bifocal, that's right. Just like the swim flipper. You're absolutely right. This young lady has a question. What is your name, young lady? Zoe. Zoe, what can I do for you this day? How did you learn how to swim? In order to teach someone to swim, what I always did was I would just tell them, drop an egg, face towards the shore, because, you know, you'll feel safer, and just try to pick up the egg, and then you'll just see that you can just float on the water. If you are convinced that the water will not hold you up, perhaps you'd like to see an interesting demonstration known as Ben Franklin's egg trick. Drop an egg into the water a little in front of you and allow it to settle on the bottom. Then submerge and try to reach the egg. Whereas you thought it would require effort to stay up, you find that you need effort to get down. Franklin said also, and this shows that he knew safety as well as swimming, always face shallow water while trying to reach the egg, because if you move, you will be moving toward shallow water and safety rather than into deep water where you may get into trouble. This is a direct quote from old Uncle Ben himself, and Franklin was the greatest swimming authority of his time. And what you'll find is that the water wants to push you up, right? And so that, as law, that will prove that drowning is really something we do to ourselves, that the water will buoyancy us up, will hold us up. Um, in fact, if the water is very salty, you can just fall asleep on it. I think it's the most comfortable bed in the world. So, um, so I thought everyone should learn how to swim. So when I proposed the country's first university, one of the things I did was suggest in my proposal that every student learn how to swim. Yes, young sir. I want to get some more information in relation. What did you wear when you were doing all this swimming? Wear? Why would I wear clothing to swim in? <laughs> what an unusual idea. Wouldn't that just weigh you down? <laughs> You know, most of the clothing we own, most of the clothing I'm wearing is made out of wool or cotton, maybe a little bit of Lindsay Woolsey. I don't think it does well when it's wet. We swim um, with no clothing on, young sir. Why, what do you wear to swim? That's why g girls and boys can swim together now, because you wear clothes. That makes perfect sense. What did you say, Ron? Exactly, that's why the women didn't swim, because all the boys were swimming, you know, naked. Oh my goodness, if the ministers up in Boston could hear us talking, they would not like this. After speaking here at the Hall of Fame to a bunch of swimmers from the Fort Lauderdale swim team, Dr. Franklin went to City Hall here in Fort Lauderdale to accept a proclamation honoring today's date, February 19, 2019, Benjamin Franklin Day in the city of Fort Lauderdale.